widow woman needs uh, permission of uh, guardian uh, regarding to marriage, second marriage? Well, that's another very interesting question. Somehow, in the mind of many people, they think or they are under the impression that the consent of the guardian is only for a girl who has never been married before. But a girl who is married once and she got divorced or she lost her husband and she is a widow, she can give herself in marriage without the consent of her guardian. Is there any reference in the Quran that solves this mas'ala? Yes, of course. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ أَنْ يَنْكِحْنَ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ إذا تراضوا بينهم بالمعروف. And this ayah again, I wish, uh, inshallah, will be able to display it on the screen, is of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in ayah number two hundred and thirty-two, when you divorce women, and the idda is over, فبلغنا أجلهن فلا تعضلهن what is this exactly? Do not prevent them nor hinder them from marrying their ex-husbands as بالمعروف As long as they come to uh, an agreement and to a good term that they want to get married. Now, listen to the story. This ayah was revealed because one of the Muslim women, her brother was her guardian, one of the Sahaba. He gave her in marriage to another Sahabi, but somehow he divorced his wife, and the idda, which is three periods or three months, elapsed, and this Sahabi did not even show interest in revoking his divorce or taking his wife back. And it was the first divorce, so he could have taken her back within the idda. After the first divorce and after the second divorce. He didn't show any interest. After the idda was over, you know, they've been talking to each other. And he showed interest. He said, you know, I miss you so much. I want to marry you again. Okay, she said, and I don't mind. Talk to my brother. Talk to my wali. So he went to her brother and said, look, I made a mistake. And I'm ready to fix it. I want to marry your sister again. In this case, it would require a new marriage contract, dowry, shuhud, witnesses, marriage contract, and obviously, number one, ijab and qabul, the consent of both the husband and the wife, the bride and the groom. So the brother said, on my dead body, I honored you and I gave you my sister in marriage and you divorced her. You did not respect the agreement between us. I will never give you my sister in marriage again. Because it was after the idda. But his sister was interested in remarrying her ex-husband. So Allah Almighty stated in this ayah 232, chapter number 2, hukm. If you get married, then you divorce your wife. So the idda is over and you did not revoke your divorce. The word فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ That's iltifat. Allah was addressing those who divorced their wives. Now he's addressing the wali, the guardian. فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ You should not hinder them. You should not stop them from marrying their ex-husbands again. If they want to, and if they come to an agreement and good terms, إذا تراضوا بينهم بالمعروف. So, أخي, what do we understand out of this? Allah addressed the wali. Please facilitate this marriage because your sister is interested in marrying him back. Which inclusively means his consent was a condition. And that's why the Quran has to intervene and talk to the guardian and said you should not stop her from marrying this guy. If his consent was insignificant, was not required, sister, go ahead and get married without his consent. Sah? 
but the Quran intervened and Allah revealed this ayah in order to address the guardians of whom of the girls who got married whether they were divorced or they were widowed still in order to get married again and again and again the consent of the guardian is required Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said in the sound hadith you want to hear the hadith? And after I say the hadith, I will explain why. لا نكاح إلا بولي وشاهد عدل. There is no valid marriage without the consent of the guardian and the presence of at least two Muslim male just witnesses. What is the purpose of both? As far as the wali. You know, I'm going to investigate and find out whether this guy is genuine or slicky, whether he is a true Muslim or not. Many cases happened before me where somebody is interested in marrying. He's in love with a girl, classmate. She says, look, Michael, we can never get married. Why not? Because, you know, I cannot marry, but I'm Muslim. Okay, no problem. I become a Muslim. Well, guess what? Is this valid? It's valid. If he really means it, and his intention is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Talha, the man, the great Sahabi whom Allah admired in the Quran, a reference in Surah Al Hash, he admired him and his wife, Umm Sulaim, who is also the mother of Anas ibn Malik. When, her, when he proposed to Umm Sulaim, she said, Mithlukala Yurad is such a, an honorable proposal, but I'm Muslima and you're not. I cannot marry you because you're not Muslim. So he thought about it and he came and said, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Can we accuse his intention, say you're a faker, you only said it in order to marry her? No, as a matter of fact, he became one of the great companions of the Prophet Sallallahu but on the other hand, there are some cases where the person is still drinking, is still gambling, is still committing adultery. He doesn't want to pray. He said, you want me to become Muslim? Okay, I'm Muslim. Here is a certificate. I don't give this person the certificate. Many cases came to me in the States. In my center, I want to become Muslim. Why? How did you know about Islam? Well, I came to know this girl and we were chatting online and she spoke about halal meat and so on. So I want to marry her and they said you have to be Muslim. So I'm here to be Muslim in order to marry her. I'll be more than happy to walk you through and educate you about Islam. And then when you start practicing, if you like it, I will give you the certificate. I don't give him the certificate right away. It is a guardian who is required to investigate all of that because of course the girl who's in love will say yeah Michael will become Muslim let's go get married and then she calls back ask her she says Sheikh eight years ago I got married to this guy who said I'm a Muslim but he never prayed I know he never prayed because he never accepted Islam you deceived your own self but we have a problem now because we have three kids I don't know what to do I don't know either because your question came to me after the case have become very complicated. It's your problem from the beginning. Whenever there is a guardian, it's his responsibility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to secure, number one, the proposal is genuine. The guy is good. He is practicing. He's earning his halal. His family is good. Bismillah, mashallah. Let's facilitate that. Secondly, if there is any problem, he's going to represent you with your husband, is his family, or in a court. You don't have to do this on your own. So it is not like a woman is incapable of processing a marriage by herself, or is incapable to do a business. She is capable to be whatever. And maybe the most successful businesswoman. But in marriage, have somebody who is a wali, who loves you so much, who is very keen. Like from now, I'm thinking about looking around for a good groom for my daughters. I don't think about the same for my boys because I know they will find out on their own, but I'm looking for the right person. 
So I would say, yeah, I have a good goal, and if you're interested, but after I verify that, this is the duty of the guardian. I hope you guys understand, because now, with the social media full of myth and misconceptions, and fuck that needs to be lifted. It is our duty to explain to our Muslim youth in the first place.